for manipulating entire school students and faculty to kill each other at only age 10, infiltrating the social circles of very wealthy men, to orchestrating a massacre by distributing guns to victims of bullying and discrimination, Johann Liebert von Munster proved himself to be a very interesting character and possibly the best villain in anime. A very calm, mysterious person whose every presence is felt throughout the 74 episodes of the series, despite his few appearances. Johan is a shadow enabler, someone with an exceptional ability in unlocking the monster and other people, exposing their darkness and fears and getting them to accept it, maybe even act on it. After sensing that wretched Braun, a private investigator is digging in his past, Johan pays him a visit, disguising the purpose as no. doing a college report. Richard used to be a great police officer, right? Until he shot the 17-year-old killer in serial R, Stephen Joss, while drunk. This ruined his career marriage and relationship with his daughter and pushed him towards despair. After six months of being sober, Richard gets a call that day that his daughter wants to see him again. Only then the devil knocks. He opens and they both go to the bar. Let's begin. The Johan offers him a drink. He already knows he used to be an alcoholic. Number one, learning people's self-sabotage patterns and guilty pleasures. That could be simple ones like alcohol, drugs, women, attention, or the ones we discussed in the previous video. He uses that to bring up the topic of Richard's murder of the kid. Number two, use specific language. Johan's word choice is key here. He avoided the words murder, person, or guy, and used words such as execution and boy because they carry more weight, amplifying the gravity of the act while appearing non threatening through his calm demeanor, polite speech, as well as asking the question. Is that right? Asking for confirmation, softening the statement, to give the impression of curiosity and not malice. Now it is very good to know that both of their body language were situated side by side. This gave them the feeling that they are on the same page and the mood is non-confrontational. The conversation continues. Richard picks up on the language and gets annoyed and emotional. Johan brings up a number of UN articles on children's rights. Richard continues to defend himself that he committed those acts due to the influence of alcohol and not by choice. Johan apologizes for making him feel intense and reassures him that he is asking the question for a research purpose just to get his side of the story. <laughs> Johan positioned himself as an objective researcher. Now both of the men are from Japan, a collectivistic culture where saving face, being polite are really important. In a different culture, different context, different personality. If not careful, you're going to get a beating. Johan's approach is super sensitive to a lot of factors. In this situation, even if Richard got really angry, he can't be violent because he would risk never seeing his daughter again. He would also lose his job as a private investigator for Hans Schuwald, the man that Johan works for as well. Number 3. Changing the environment to diffuse the tension. The environment often dictates the energy and changing the location offers another opportunity to start over, creating even an illusion of a mental journey. Let's say someone asks you to do something for them, 
but you can't. What you should do is, you both move as you talk to them and reject them in a different location. This creates an unconscious feeling of reconsideration that you have put in some effort and thus softens the rejection. By leaving the bar, Johan has done the same thing. The whiskey will play its part later. Stefan now we don't know how much time they've been talking outside the bar. Johan brings about the topic once more, discussing the personal past of that boy and how it's tragic in an environment that didn't respect his human rights, hinting that he didn't have a choice but to become what he became, and subtly accusing Richard of doing the same thing in a way. Remember the conversation about the articles? Johan was slowly planting a seed. He then asks about his daughter right after. The daughter and the boy have two things in common. One is that they are both young. Second is that Richard has, is having an impact on both. The world gave the boy no chance. Richard gave the boy no chance. And will he be fit to raise his kid? Will he ever give his kid a chance to survive, to be her own person? The seeds of thought are getting planted. Doubt is creeping in slowly. Manipulation that aims at destroying a person's identity takes time and consistency. Concentration camps usually start by breaking the identity of the person, using assaults on the identity, challenging views, insults, getting the person to commit self-betrayal, to admit that they are wrong about something, regardless of how small it is, to feel guilt, to denounce their peers and family, and it builds up through time. Time is a key factor here because it gives the chance for the person to hang himself psychologically and be their worst enemy. The anime demonstrates this through environment shifts from the bar to the streets to the stairs. No effective brainwashing can be done, however, without proper isolation. So number four, isolating the target. This is why Johan takes him to the roof of the building. That and something else. Coming soon. Now we come to the final showdown. The seeds are firmly planted. Johan challenges the premise of the argument. The lie that Richard convinces himself and others to live his life normally. Number 5. Learning what lies people tell themselves and others. The truth is that Richard wanted to execute the now it's only a matter of adding fuel to the fire with a series of questions that create even more doubt and challenge his self-deceptions. Add the isolation and feelings of entrapment and despair that come with it. Johan asks him, can a man who has committed such a sin really meet with his daughter and say he's turned his life around? This final question is what seals the deal. Nante 
娘さんに会うんですか Why? Because it attacks two things. It attacks the heart of Richard's identity, the idea of being a good father, and second, the possibility of salvation. Can a murderer ever be a good father? Can a murderer ever change? どうです飲みませんか The seeds have flourished and Richard is arriving at the conclusions himself. There is no way out for him. He feels alone in this world and nothing will ever change. The animation is amazing here, making Johan's eye look like a black hole, absorbing Richard's entire reality. The same way the monster with no name absorbs everyone he comes across. Number 6. Feeding their destructive impulses and bad habits. Now that Richard's sense of self is fading into oblivion, Johan introduces Wesky into the equation, Richard's scoping mechanism. The way of quieting his demons. Is he too weak to say no? We don't know. Until the next scene. And the next scene showcases that Richard self deleted. This is anime. Which means that things are dramatized and exaggerated to their extremes, but it still offers some good insights on how some of the process actually works. So, generally, cults, religious affiliations, governments, in the process of brainwashing, they don't destroy the possibility for salvation. So, after step one, which is breaking the identity, finding out what makes their identity, what things they care about, And seeking to destroy those beliefs and things. Then comes step two, which is the offer for the possibility for salvation. The brainwasher first introduces the idea that they can help the target. They give them extra food. They ask personal questions about their family and loved ones. This creates contrast from the first phase characterized by pain. The contrast makes them feel grateful and even more receptive. Then the brainwasher makes them confess. Then helps them release the guilt. There are other steps, of course. And this takes time. But this is not the video for it. I might do another video on Johan sometime in the future. If you are interested, leave comments. Like the video. Share it with your friends. If you have seen the entirety of the video, leave hashtag done. You can watch a video on shadow enablers. Or continue with more character breakdowns. Whatever you do, stay sharp.